Hello everyone, welcome back to Cybersecure TV. Uh, today we're going to talk about the insecure deserialization. And uh, today's topic is more geared towards the PHP. How do we exploit the insecure deserialization and some, some of the basic concepts around the PHP like what we have been talking about in the past, past few videos. Uh, if you want to know about the basic things about what is serialization, deserialization, what is the vulnerability and, and uh, pertains to the OAS top 10, then we already have covered in, in another playlist. So please check that out. Uh, the link is in the description. So uh, first off, like I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go into two details, but let's talk briefly. What is serialization and deserialization? So uh, suppose you have a uh, data structure or like you have a class and in that like you know uh, I'm not going to explain what the class is but in the class you have a set of functions set of variables and uh, once you have all the values of those variables you want to transmit that to another uh, service like right? you want to stream that so for example you have object here and the object contains let's say user data like first name last name address phone number tens of other things and you want to send it over to another object or another file system like database or memory so what you do is you first serialize the data so serialize will give you like a string so even though you have a bunch of other uh, data like first name last name everything uh, sorted out in different variables it will give you one simple string you transmit that so of course it becomes easier for any developer to transmit that that a uh, single string rather than multiple uh, different details and then when it arrives at the destination, you deserialize the data and you can use it. And deserialization will give you exact form of data which was serialized earlier. So this is the concept of serialization and deserialization. Now, one thing you would definitely notice here is when, when you actually deserialize the data, uh, you want to make sure the attacker cannot put its own object or values when you're deserializing, uh, deserializing the content of the object. And if they do, then that, that's what uh, covers like the insecure deserialization. So here, as you can see in this example, uh, and of course, you're going to see the live example at the later later part of the video, but I want to make sure your concept is clear on what the deserialization and the serialization is. So let's say this is the actual source, and then you have serialized object, and you serialize it, and, and every programming language has their own function. So you don't have to invent yourself like, uh, for example, in PHP, you have serialize and uh, deserialize, or sorry, unserialize. So you have those functions, which you can definitely use uh, to serialize and unserialize the data. So you use that, and then it will give you a stream of byte. Now, if you know about the AWS Kinesis, uh, it's similar thing. Like Kinesis, you can you can continuously transfer stream of data to another service where the other service can read from it. So it's a similar concept. So there is a stream of byte, and then from that, uh, the uh, application source code uh, will deserialize the data without verification, right? So here you can think of as like encryption decryption. When you're sending the data, you're encrypting it. When you're uh, like, you know, decrypting the data, the, uh, the source or the entity should have the key to decrypt the data. So that's how we are verifying. Here we are doing no verification because the deserialization happens within the application. And then whatever the object is, it's going to take the action. Now suppose there's attacker source and they can also put the serialized object here which gets deserialized by the application without verifying whether it is coming from the attacker or application and then it takes the action. That's where the insecure deserialization happens. Now still don't worry if you don't understand. I have really good examples later on so you can actually uh, learn what is what's happening in the back end. So what is the object format, right? Uh, so if you see like here, site name cybersecure TV, site is popular, there is one of the variable, it says true. So you have this kind of variable. Now when you're serializing it, it becomes like this, 04 site r2. So what is O uh, and four? Four means uh, these four characters in the site. Two means there are two objects within, uh, sorry, like two fields, you can say, within this serialized object. One is name, another one is, is popular. And here you can see the length of the string. So name is 4, 15. So if you count this, this is 15 and is popular is 9 and 1 is equal to true. So that's how, uh, like, you know, when you serialize the data, this is how it's, it's formatted. And when you want to 
detect how like you know whether the particular object is serialized or not if you are doing passive scanning or active scanning with the burp then of course you can uh, like find it as you can see here in in the burp it says uh http serialized object found right so that's how you can typically note uh, detect whether any data is serialized or not and then you can try to create your own serialized object and try to insert into uh, the payload and see if it works now when we are talking about the php we must talk about the magic methods and why is it called magic methods because it invokes automatically upon an event or a scenario so the event you can you can consider as in uh, an object is created an object is deleted right so those kind of event and and these are the methods like there's double underscore and then construct slip wake up destruct to string so these are some mag magic methods and if you want to see those in details uh, let me yeah so here so as you can see magic methods are special methods which overrides php's default action when certain actions are performed on an object uh, here you can see the different uh, so serialize checks if the class has function with the magic magic name slip there's something what we are interested in is uh, in the unserialize and the wake up and actually there should be one more which is called destruct uh, somewhere uh, let's find out. Oh, destruct. There you go. So here, PHP possesses a destructor concept similar to that other objected oriented language such as C++. The destructor method will be called. So like when this will be called, so that's an event. As soon as there are no other references to the particular object or in any order during shutdown sequence. So that's where the destruct uh, method will be called and, and whatever the part of this method will be executed, right? So here you can say my destructible class, this is the example, a construct. So whenever the object is created, it's gonna call and destruct is when you're destroying the object. And as you can see, uh, as you initialize this object, it's gonna print in constructor. And then as soon as this is completed, it says destroying this class. So this is very standard method. So why this is useful? Why are we even talking about these methods in our insecure deserialization? And the reason is these are dangerous if method contains the attacker control data. So suppose in the destruct method you have, you can pass attacker control data, then of course, you know, you don't need to invoke those methods. It's gonna like, you know, execute as soon as some event occurs. And that's where uh, the destruct destruct method or any of this magic method is going to be useful so let's see an example after this so how do you find vulnerability how do you find like whether unserialized or deserialized or insecure deserialization vulnerability exist one look for the word unserialized so whenever you if you have access to the source code great just look for the word unserialized and see if that like if in that method, is it possible for the attacker's control data uh, can be passed, right? If you can, then yeah, that's a easy way to exploit this. So if you, if you take this example, it says, uh, this is like, you know, uh, one of the WordPress uh, function, import pop-ups and they have a global variable. Then there's a URL, which is called, like it's taken from the post attachment URL. And as you can see, content unserialized base 64D code file get content URL. So URL is actually, of course, attacker's control uh, data because I as a user can put whatever I want in the URL. So it's gonna get that, it's gonna base 64D code and then unserialize. And that content is going to be useful somewhere in the WordPress. So this is the kind of a workflow which we are looking for but you don't need to have access to the source code every time to find this vulnerability. In the example we're gonna show, when you don't have access to the source code, how you can exploit it. Uh, one interesting function or I guess tool that I've, I've seen is PHP GGC. This is of course mostly for the PHP, but it, it will uh, let you like, you know, uh, uh, create the payloads uh, without you need to worry about. So here, as you can see, a uh, monologue library containers a gadget that allows for code execution and the parameter here would be set to the pass-through function 
and write out PHP info. So this is what our payload is when you use this tool. And if you if you want to see this tool more detail, here it is. So as you can see, PHP GGC is a library of unserialized payloads along with a tool generated them from command line or programmatically. When encountering an unserialized on a website, you don't have the code of or simply when trying to build an exploit, this tool allows you to generate the payload without having to go through the tedious steps of finding gadgets and combining them. It can be seen as equivalent of uh, Viso Serial. I think this, this is the tool we discussed in the one of the previous video. But for PHP, currently the tool supports gadget chain for this many frameworks, which are good enough like uh, if you like these are most popular frameworks that's been used by the PHP so uh, here uh, that that's how you're gonna use this tool uh, to build the object or uh, build the exploit and ignore this queue I think that's a typo but there's a class called foo and then you have public variable bar there are three kinds of variable you have public private and protected not all the variables are accessible outside of the class, so you have to uh, be wary of which variables you can uh, you can uh, access. So you have two functions uh, or two magic methods. One is construct, one is wake up, and uh, then like you know this wake up method has evaluation function which evaluates the bar variable, and then there is an object which unserialize the data, which is of course at it as it seems uh, from the get URL. It decodes base64 and then use it. So this is this seems very scary, right? So how how do we exploit it? That's that's the th main thing. So if you if you look at the wake up, uh, so wake up here the intent use of sleep is to commit pending data or perform similar cleanup task. Conversely, a checks for the presence of a function with the magic name wake up. If present, this function can reconstruct any resource that the object may have. So if you have an object of the class, it may reconstruct any resources. So how are you going to build the exploit? So first off, of course, you declare the PHP, then you declare the class, public bar, and here is our payload. Uh, we want to know the system ID. You can also put PHP in for or whatever you want. Then you create a new object, uh, you serialize the object, then uh, you base64 the serialized object, and then you echo it. So whenever you're gonna do that, it's gonna call this uh, wake up function and it's gonna evaluate this object and it's going to print the system ID, right? So that's how the uh, the actual, like, you know, this, if you are reviewing the source code, that's how you, you're gonna detect whether the something is uh, vulnerable to insecure serialization. Now let's look at the actual uh, demo and see how it works. So here is the uh, website, uh, and the lab is arbitrary object injection in the PHP. And uh, this is what we're going to use for our demo today. So simply uh, make sure you have the burp configure and running, right, which is here. And actually, let me turn off the interception for now. You go to the my account and then you have to log in. And login and password is already given to you. So, but make sure you turn the interception on and then let's okay I think I have to change the target here so let me do that so we can capture the traffic okay there you go all right let me refresh okay so here you can see uh, we are calling the my account get my account there's a host there's a cookie right nothing seems odd here but if you know this this particular cookie value is serialized. Now, how do you know, right? If if you are just doing a pen testing, how would you know this is serialized? So if you if you scan this with the with the burp suite, you can actually it's gonna actually uh, like you know tell you that yeah this is there is a serialized object in the in the HTTP message. It it will not say uh, like you know uh, this is a vulnerability. It says you have to confirm it, but there is an object which which is which seems like a serialized object and that's how you would know of course you can also uh, so as you can see all the other uh, session appears to be a serialized PHP object and then what you can also do is uh, let's okay let me refresh this page you copy this 
go to the decoder and then decode as base64. So as you can see, this is the same format that we had used earlier, right? We had seen earlier. So this is this is how it, it like you know the serialized object look like in the real life and, and especially in the PHP. So now what are we going to do is so there is one uh, file here custom template let's look at this file and if you append a tile sign here you can actually look at the source code uh, let's review the source code here so this is the custom template class there are two variables private template file path and lock file path there's a public function construct as we know uh, this will be called when the object is initiated it says template file path is equal to this uh, lock file path is equal to this and plus lock there's another private method is template locked then there's a get template there's a save template and then there is a destruct method which says if file exists then unlink this file now if we if we want to call this method right uh, so if you create an object and then of course that ultimately the object is going to be deleted that's whatever the file path you're gonna give it's going to unlink from the website that's the source code like that's that's what the the business logic behind this code is so what we need to do now we have to create an object which can mimic this so how are you gonna do this so let's go back here so this is what we're gonna try so custom template is the name of the class we have one uh, parameter or variable lock file path is the name of the variable as you can see here right which is actually being used by the destruct method and then and this is the file we going we want to delete or unlink right so first what you need to do you need to encode with the base64 now after you basic encode it uh, what we can do is we can actually send this file to repeater and is uh, now what we're gonna do we're gonna replace this session because there is a serialized object now we are adding our own serialized object here so uh, which is base64 encoded right so application is going to decode it and then it will be passed to the destruct method whenever the object is deleted and then it's going to unlink the file of course it might not be visible to us but uh, you should okay so yeah that is like of course you can solve this lab uh, following the steps you have on the buff suite and also buff suite if you go to the page uh, they have like so many other labs i would highly encourage you to go and try those out my goal was here not to solve this lab or, or like you know at least uh, give you a solution because solution you can find on the buff suite anyway my, my goal was to make you understand how you can detect the unserialization or de deserialization vulnerability, especially in the PHP. What are magic methods? How how it actually works in the backend? So hope that 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 my goal of uh, goal was uh, like you know able to explain you all of those things. Uh, you uh, like you know you'll be able to understand that and probably uh, use that in the real world as well. Uh, so that's it uh, for this video if you have any questions uh, feel free to drop it down i have attached all the links in the description so do check that out uh, also i have also attached the link to the lab, lab as well so uh, if you want to try any of those labs uh, feel free to do so you just need to create like a free account on the web suite which I, I guess you can easily do that uh, so that's all uh, from me uh, thank you so much and i'll look forward to your comments bye